This experiment produces chlorine gas and deals with caustic and corrosive materials. Proper safety equipment such as gloves and goggles are mandatory at a minimum. Potassium chlorate is a powerful oxidizer which is commonly used in explosives as well as propellants. In this video we explore the production of potassium chlorate from pool chlorinating tablets. In my opinion this method is much faster and much safer than the previous method I showed using calcium hydroxide and chlorine gas. For this synthesis I only used two chemicals. 100 grams of calcium hypochlorite tablets with 65% available calcium hypochlorite and 26 grams of potassium chloride. 500 milliliters of water were added to a 2 liter Erlenmeyer flask. Then 100 grams of calcium chloride tablets were added. This mixture was then stirred and brought to a boil. The solution was boiled for 5 hours. A lot of the water was allowed to boil off, but water was occasionally added to maintain the volume at about 300 milliliters. In a previous run, I boiled the solution for 3 hours and the yield was about 20% less, so I believe that boiling it longer is better for the yield, but probably you won't get much more after 5 hours. As the solution is boiling for a while, you might notice that the color starts to turn pink. The pink color is likely due to manganese impurities and is no indication of the progress of the reaction. The reaction occurring is a disproportionation reaction which is shown above. Calcium hypochlorite dissolves in water and the hypochlorite ion reacts with water to produce hypochlorous acid and hydrochloric acid. Then in the presence of heat and hypochlorous acid, the calcium hypochlorite disproportionates to calcium chloride and calcium chlorate. After 5 hours, the solution was allowed to stand and the suspension was allowed to settle on the bottom. The solution was gravity filtered using coffee filters which is unfortunately quite time consuming. In this case, a vacuum filtration is extremely useful because it will take a lot less time. One thing that you'll probably notice is that the pink color actually disappears as the solution is filtered through. To be perfectly honest, I'm not entirely sure why this occurs, but again as I said before, this is related to the oxidation state of manganese ions, which doesn't represent the reaction. The insoluble material was washed twice with a small amount of water, only 25 milliliters. After the solution is filtered, heat it up to about 80 to 90 degrees Celsius. To the hot solution, 26 grams of potassium chloride was added. The solution was then boiled until the faint yellow color disappeared. This is important to dry off any remaining chlorine in solution. To do this, it took about 10 to 15 minutes of boiling. Water was added to keep the volume around 250 milliliters. The reaction occurring is shown above. By a double displacement reaction, potassium chloride reacts with calcium chlorate to produce potassium chlorate and calcium chloride. The potassium chlorate is quite insoluble in water and as the solution cools it will precipitate out. Afterwards the solution was allowed to stand so that undissolved materials would settle at the bottom. This again was gravity filtered. The insoluble material was washed twice using 25 milliliters of water. The solution was allowed to cool to room temperature and potassium chlorate crystals began to form. Once the solution had reached room temperature, the beaker was transferred to a freezer to precipitate out as much as possible. The liquid portion was then decanted into another beaker and discarded. The crystals were then washed once using 20 milliliters of ice cold water. You can stop at this point if you only desire moderately pure potassium chlorate. However, I decided to purify the crystals more and carry out a recrystallization. After recrystallization, the final yield was about 15 grams of relatively pure potassium chlorate. It was then tested by igniting an equal portion of potassium chlorate and sugar using concentrated sulfuric acid. 